Hey everybody and welcome to IP Critique. Today we are taking a look at 10 landscape photos submitted by the Improved Photography community. You can submit your photo to IP Critique uh, by going on Instagram and using hashtag IP Critique. And while you're at it, follow me at Jim Harmer. Uh, all right, we're going to take a look at the first picture from Jana K. Wood. All right, Jana, this is an awesome sunset. Um, it's, you know, got the color in there. Love this cactus right here in the foreground. Um, but if I were to say a couple things that I think could be improved on this, uh, it would be that the other cactus, the other cacti um, <laughs> on the right side and the left just feel very chopped kind of arbitrarily. Uh, it just doesn't feel like there was a rhyme or reason for uh, what was included in the photo and what was taken out. Sandy, Larissa, what do you guys think? I was going to say the same thing. It's almost like fingers. Like there's only half of <laughs> I don't like the chopping off of the it's put it all in or, or all or nothing on that one, I think. Very cool. All right. And I feel this. Yeah. Same Sorry, way. I think the same thing. It looks kind of crooked, not crooked, but I don't know. That cacti just kind of leaning a bit to me. So maybe some... Um, lens correction or something you know and i i was gonna say the angle i like that that uh she shot it from down below to kind of get a different perspective on it um i can see what you're saying though where the horizon isn't quite level um and then also the shadows could be brought up a little bit for the foreground elements it's a little dark in the front very cool yeah i think it's good that she was as low as she is because if she were any higher the kind of the where the cactus starts to branch out uh i i think you want that to be in the sky and not under the horizon line or else you'd kind of lose the shape of it totally all right the next photo comes from uh drop the press on instagram uh showing this awesome low, uh, lower yosemite falls shot um First of all, we have a major fisheye uh, distortion yeah. on the photo. Um, it looks like these mountains are super curved in. Um, you know, it's okay. I, you know, kind of the GoPro effect is kind of a style now um, that we see it so often, but it's not something that, that photographers would usually get excited about. And the other thing I'd say about this one is we have a good 25% of the photo that's just blank canvas. You know, it's like Picasso was, uh, you know, going through painting and was like, nah, I'm just going to leave this hole in the canvas with nothing. Uh, and that's just the blue sky area. There's no clouds in it, no anything. Um, and so uh, th that's something that I think sometimes detracts from a landscape kind of photo. Talking about the distortion, even the subject, the person is so distorted that it's almost uncomfortable. Yeah, and that even happens on an iPhone. If you put somebody's, like if you're shooting in portrait orientation up and down on an, on an iPhone, if you put the person's face like at the top portion of the photo, they look super distorted, like their, their forehead will look like it's a foot tall. Uh, so you do have to be careful with that distortion no matter what, but especially if we're shooting wide angle. Okay, the next photo comes from uh, Vermis54 from Zimmerman, Minnesota. Um, this is the, the barn falling into the water. What'd you think about this one, Larissa? Hold on, I've got to get oh, it up. Oh, it's got to come up. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, I like, I like that. Um, I feel like it's kind of flat though. Yeah, I feel the like it could be a little flat. bit more vibrant. Yeah. And also on the bottom left, there's that one little thing sticking up there. I oh, think yeah, maybe crop tail. that in a little bit. Yeah. Crop that in. And the it's not really rule of thirds, you know, though there's no rule of thirds, just a suggestion. But I feel like <laughs> it's, it's too wide. You know, maybe crop it in, bring the barn a little more to the right and then crop in that left side a little bit to get rid of that corn dog looking thing in the bottom there <laughs> <Cat> tail, yeah. <laughs> you know I'm, not, I'm a city girl so <laughs> that's all right the corn dog thing i'm not quite sure how to put this one um first of all the lighting is super flat you know it's an overcast day there are clouds which is good but when there are when there are overcast clouds uh, it means you aren't going to get that great highlight and shadow difference and so i totally agree with you that the lighting is feeling very flat um, also, the interesting subject here it occupies maybe 
four, five percent of the frame. It's that cool falling over barn, uh, but it's so tiny in the picture that it's it's hard to appreciate that that story. Um, but I don't know if we were to just zoom in on it, it would probably be boring. I, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure what the composition is here. But when I first looked at it, it just didn't have that impact um, that, that I, I wish it would have had. And maybe it's just the lighting that's doing that. What do you think, Sandy? You can tell that there's thought into it because they're framing it with those reads. It's almost like they, they looked at the foreground elements before they looked at the subject of it. And so there's a thought process there. Like you can tell that it's not just a snapshot, but the composition is, is kind of uh, weak. I mean, even there's not enough sky at the top and eh, yeah, something's just not clicking. <laughs> but it's a cool location. I, I can see what she's going for here. Um, I, I don't know. Just, I think it's the lighting that, that's maybe throwing me off on that. The next one uh, comes from Compelling Imaging from Clatskanny, Oregon. Uh, this is a really great, great exposure. Uh, the exposure time on this is perfect. Don't change anything. Love seeing the swirl uh, in the bottom right here. The length of the exposure on the water is just right. We get to see some detail in the, in the water. Um, you know, it's not overblown, but uh, but it's it's really nice. I like that. The the water has gone to a very deep black um, here. I think we, I don't know, maybe could bring up our shadows just a little bit, especially in the rocks on the waterfall itself. Uh, we've lost some detail there. Um, but again, the lighting here is very flat. Y you can tell this is an overcast morning uh, or that the sun is blocked by a mountain or something. Um, uh, which isn't, it's not a bad thing. It's just that when you do that, it, it can have a tendency to make the photo just feel a little bit lifeless uh, when you don't have that, that pop of interesting light coming in. It's not bad light, it's just not super interesting either. Any other thoughts? I'm confused. I'm confused on what the subject is supposed to be. It's almost there's too much going on because you go back and forth between the curl, the swirls and then the waterfall and then the swirls and the waterfall. And it's just like this back and forth that I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to be looking. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. It's a good point. All right. The next photo is uh, from Instagram user photos by Blaine in Manassas Battlefield. <laughs> He's just on a battlefield. <laughs> um, okay. Um, you love, I love the sunset on this one. It has awesome color. Um, I like the idea of having just kind of the lone tree here. Um, but this is like a Colossus tree. Um, it, it, it feels like just kind of giant tree in front of sunset. And, it, you know, usually when we're going for that lone tree kind of look, we want the tree to feel diminutive and small in, in a giant landscape. I think that's kind of the appeal of this very popular composition of a lone tree kind of composition. But this tree is huge. It takes up 50% of the frame. And so maybe if we scoot way back uh, to make it look smaller and more minuscule, diminutive in the, in the frame and shoot a little wider to give it more space on either side, Maybe that would be interesting, but right now it just feels like huge tree in front of sunset. I think that the colors are, are glorious. It just looks a little over-processed to me. It's almost like um, when you use the filters and from your phone and it just kind of mucks it all up. Yeah, it could be a little bit too much but vibrance here. I feel like the, you know, like Sandy's saying, the background, the sunset is very vibrant, but I feel like the foreground is not. I mean, it's like... I know it's it's still kind of summertime. I feel like it should be a little bit more green in the grass. I could, you see know, that. it's just kind of all, all muddy and a blah color. Cool. All right, Benaru Ben uh, sends in this next one um, from Instagram B A I J A Y A Y A S. Um, you know, this is a nice thought. Uh, I've shot a lot of photos like this, kind of at the at the beach with the you know kind of yellow sunset and the the sea oats in the in the foreground. Um, I think the reason that this one maybe doesn't have that that impact is um, the the sky feels very artificially yellow, a very very fakey kind of yellow uh, look. And you can even see at the top right and top left that the sky really wants to be blue there, uh, but kind of the mixed with the yellow kind of just makes it turn to kind of a gray color. Um, and also the the reeds in the foreground here, 
Um, just aren't super interesting. These ones just kind of stick up. They aren't like those cool sea oats. And, um, you know, we don't have the cool sun flare from the sun because uh, it was probably shot at too wide of an aperture. If you stop down the aperture, you're going to get more of those uh, streaks from the light flare. Um, so I, I, th I think it's a good thought, but I, I think it's maybe not as complete. Uh, you know, when we see other photos of this similar composition, I think I think uh, it has a little bit more impact. Let's jump to the next I one. I feel like... Uh, from oh, Schofield Images. What do you think about this one, uh, Larissa? This is the pier going out into the water? Um, I mean, again, with the yellow sky, it's just too yellow on the right-hand side. And I don't know, I've seen this shot done before, but it just, again, it seems like a lot of these images are pretty flat. You know, it's like the brown on the deck just looks kind of, you know, Law, I, I guess. I agree. That I mean, it's a, a lot great of these concept. Photos have uh, a very uh, dead, dead-looking colors and contrast in them, and and this one is true. I can definitely see that in in the wood here as well. This is my favorite one so far. I mean, I I think that it's um, it's it's moody. It creates a sense of emotion for me, and and I like the longer exposure. But there's you can tell there's a person on the the pier. You kind of it, it, I kind I like it, I personally. Yeah, I, I would agree that I think this is probably my favorite uh, from them. I, I would love to see this image reprocessed. Ooh. Feels like a really solid composition. Um, I like that it's not too obvious of a composition that we're kind of shooting at an angle uh, to the pier. And the sky looks really great. I, I just love to reprocess this thing. The next shot is from ND Shadows. Um, this is a, a little kind of stick in the, in the water, in the sky. Um, I, I like the idea of having the foreground, midground, background here. I think this is just missing interest um, in the photo. You know, the sky is very normal there's just a couple little wisps of clouds uh, there's not any interesting lighting going on a tiny bit of light kind of hitting on the stick here but most of it is just kind of in shadow in these trees um, there's just the the subject itself the moment that this was photographed at just wasn't super exciting and so i feel like this is a a decent composition that we just need to go back to a couple times until the the conditions are just right Let's jump to the next one uh, from Brian Pex. Uh, Brian writes a lot of articles on improvephotography.com. Hey, Brian. I was going to say, I recognize that name. And I like this one. I think mm -hmm. um, I love that you can see, I guess it's water or texture on the wood near the um, the bottom right of the of the photograph. And I think the colors are great here. Yeah, I love this texture of the, the little water drops on there as well. I think that's super cool. The color is really good. The composition is great. Uh, this this one moves into number one for me. Me too. And the leading lines going back to that sunset are amazing. And I always think, would I hang this on my wall? And I would definitely hang this on my wall. I think it's a glorious image. Very cool. And I love the reflection of the the clouds in the in the water on the left-hand side. Oh, yeah, very nice. Matt Robertson, Matthew J. Robertson on, oh, from Scranton, Pennsylvania. This He must be a fan of The Office, right? This is Jim <laughs> Halpert's, Halpert's uh, name here. Uh, okay, compositionally, I think this is a very strong photo. Um, and the reason is that I feel like the sun is kind of the center of everything. We have the lines of the trees, the creek going there, these little rifts in the water, all, all kind of coming to this one point of the sun. Really, really good there. Uh, to me, the, the place where this photo struggles a bit is with the dynamic range and color. Um, we've lost dynamic range in the sky here. The sky has gone completely white, um, and it's a very high dynamic range scene. I think this one just really needs to be bracketed. No camera is going to be able to ca capture this fully. Um, so I I'd love to see uh, some, some exposure maintained in the sky, uh, but I really love the composition. It's a very strong, uh, strong composition here. 
Okay, that's what we think about it. Uh, all right, let's go to Rob Ryan. Uh, this is Rob Ryan Photography. Uh, this is a night photo that we get to see some uh, some lightning out in, in the distance. Uh, so what I would say about this one first thing as I'm looking at it is it looks very, very soft. Uh, the, the reeds in the foreground here look soft. The stars look soft. The lightning looks soft. That could just be be Instagram here um, that, you know, may not have a super high resolution photo. Oh, this was taken in Idaho Falls. I was just there a couple weeks ago, um, but it's looking very soft. Um, so hopefully that's not a, a problem on the original image. Yeah, I mean, the foreground elements are kind of, I don't really know, I don't have a solution to it, but it, there's something off balance because the lightning on the left is in the clouds over there are so heavy on the left. Like, I kind of feel like you need something in the foreground on the right, but I, yeah, I don't know nice if that's the answer. Barn or something, I think, would totally something? fit here. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, because if you it's look tough. at it like, uh, you know, let's say 35% of the photo is just this foreground of just these reeds. Um, and none of them specifically stand out. You know, there's not like a lone flower in there or a barn or anything. It's just like random wilderness is 35% of the picture. And then everything is going on crazy in this awesome sky. Um, so I, I would love to see, you know, a barn here uh, or something that, that would, first of all, extend from the foreground up into the sky and tie the two together and also would add some interest to this just raw wilderness on the bottom. All right. Well, some great pictures uh, submitted this week. Thank you for submitting your photos with hashtag IP critique. And uh, you can check on YouTube back each week as we review more of the photos that are, are submitted. Be sure to check out Sandy Duro and Larissa Gobetz on Instagram as well. Um, you can just search their names and I'm sure you guys will come up. What are, what's your, what are your Instagram handles? Sandy Duro. Larissa Photos. Cool. Uh, oh, nice. And I'm at Improved Photography. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you next week on IP Critique.